For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. Welcome to the Essential Bible Studies podcast. My name is Tim Young. And I'm Matt Colby. We're here with the very first episode of the Essential Bible Studies podcast. I'm excited to have you here, Matt. I'm very excited. Yeah. So we've been talking about this for a while and getting this all going. Yep. And trying to figure out where we're going to start. And this seems to be the best place because this is really, in my mind, where this thought of essential comes from. So we have the idea of Bible study and using tools and all those kind of things that can help us. We'll be talking about that. But in terms of the scriptures, the types of scriptures and verses that we're going to be looking at are essential for our understanding. They are basic Bible passages that we really should all understand for our faith and all agree upon. Right. And the Bible is a complex book. It's easy to misunderstand and get off track if we don't understand its most basic teaching. So we want, we want this show to engage in very, some very key passages and just basically unpack them to reveal how much they touch our core beliefs. Yeah. And so these things matter. Yep. And it's been a good exercise for us, too, to unpack that for ourselves and begin at the beginning, as right, it were. Right. Basically, the, the gospel is about our relationship to God mm-hmm. and how we're going to represent God in our lives. And so we basically have to understand things about God, and we have to understand things about man, about ourselves. And so that's what we want to do in this in this podcast, really kind of just bring all those those concepts together so that... We can have this this relationship with God and understand one another. There's so much better. So our key verse for this show is Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. Now, I wanted to read it just in a little bit more context here, and we're going to start off in verse 11. Hebrews is a pretty deep book. It yeah. uh, has a lot in it, and the writer of the Hebrews is going through the law of Moses in a very kind of allegorical way and showing how the things in the Lord Jesus Christ are so much better than the things in the law because the law was just a shadow of that which is Christ. And so he's gone through several of these things, but he takes this this break in chapter 5 and verse 11, and he says this, About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So we're honing in here on that, the phrase in verse 12, basic principles. Now I'm reading right. from the English Standard Version, the ESV there. In something like the King James Version, they say first principles. Yeah, same idea, right? Same idea, and it comes from that, that word basic or first comes from a Greek word, arche, and it, it has this meaning of chief in order, time, place, or rank. So it has a general meaning just like in, in rank, like space or like the, the order of things, but right. also in time. And so it has the idea of being, being chief or first. The word principle there is another Greek word, which has a... Again, a very similar meaning. It means uh, the first things from which others in a series or composite whole take their rise. And so it, it's used of letters of the alphabet. Ah, right. So basically we're talking about our ABCs here, mm-hmm. like we would say in English, basic elements of speech. Right. So as we build up sentences and those kind of things, we have letters. And the same is, I think he's getting across here, true with doctrine. Right. And we have ABCs of doctrine. 
Okay. So you've got to learn your alphabet before you can learn how to read. Right, exactly. That's the idea. And uh, this word is also used just in chapter 6 and verse 1, but there, interestingly enough, it's in the ESV, it's translated elementary. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ. Right. So, so for some reason, the translators thought to change it a little bit there from principles to elementary. But if you look in the original Greek, it's, it's all the same. So subjects can be hard to explain if we do not grasp, he says, the basic principles of the oracles of God. So he goes on to talk about this, this kind of analogy between milk and solid food, as he puts it. Yeah. What do you think about that? Man? Well, it's an interesting one. It's, what's really nice about it is that it's a universal analogy. So we can understand it, I think, just as well today as those who were being written to a few thousand years ago would have been able to understand it because the example is of a child or a baby and that baby growing up. And in the analogy, you've got milk and you've got solid food. And if implied also is the baby or the child. And when a baby is born, we give them milk. Now, you could try to give them solid food, but they're, they almost certainly will reject it if you do that too mm. soon. So they can only take milk at first. But there comes a point when you really want to transition from milk to solid food and introduce that solid food. If you never give them solid food, then it'll be disastrous, right? Eventually, they will uh, be deprived of all nutrition and, and probably not live very long. So they've got to move on to that solid food, but you don't do it right away. And so in this analogy, the milk and the solid food are both the principles of God or the, the gospel message and the teachings of God, sort of like you said earlier, the things God wants us to know about himself and about us and his creation and what he wants from us in context of, of in the context of our lives and, and how he's working in our lives. And so the milk are the elementary principles, the ABCs, the fundamental things God wants us to understand. The solid food are the things that are a little bit more complex, but we won't be able to understand those without having first the milk, taking the milk first and then progressing to the meat. And so this is an analogy that we can understand in terms of how we raise our children, right? So when we have a child, we give them rules and we fully understand that they don't know why we've given them those rules. So, so I have a little boy, Jack, he's almost two now, and I tell him one of the rules is don't touch the oven. Sometimes the oven is hot, sometimes it's not, but the rule is don't touch the oven. And the rule is there for his own safety because we don't want him to burn his hand, but he doesn't understand that. Eventually, though, we expect that he will. And I'm hoping that at some point he'll become mature enough that he understands that I don't touch that oven because it's hot. And eventually we won't need the rule anymore because he'll know when he can touch the oven and when he can, and he'll know how to use it so that it's useful. And he'll understand the principle behind it. This is the same thing that we're talking about with the milk and the solid food when it comes to understanding the elementary principles. God doesn't want us to just take the things that he's told us in the Bible and treat them like a checklist. Mm, you know, I, these yeah. are things I should do, right. and I've done them all, check, 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 and here's the things I shouldn't do, and I've, I've not done them, check, check, check. He wants us to understand the principles behind why he's told us to do something or not to do something so that we can understand the difference between right and wrong and then go on to make good decisions in our lives so that we can be more like Jesus and in so doing, you know, be more like God himself. And that's sort of the point behind this analogy. Right. That's good. I was sitting here with rapt attention because I know you you just had a child too, like last yes. month. Yes, you got a newborn right. baby in your house and it's on milk and you got another uh -huh. one who's gone on to meat. <laughs> yep. And he's too young for rules even. We're yeah. just trying to keep him alive right now. <laughs> Some very busy boys, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that's interesting. It's not rule-based. It's principle-based. Yeah. So first principles, we're going to be using that term, but these these topics here are just so essential. And so I think that's, that's interesting as you talk about because uh, the ESV in verse uh, 13 says that those who are on milk are unskilled, right. that these are practical principles, that uh, doctrinal principles, teachings, but they are practical for our lives. And we are exercised thereby. Our powers of discernment have to be have to grow. Right. And if we don't have these basic principles right, we're not we're going to be 
not able to discern between good and evil, as this passage says, right? Right, and and sometimes that's a very difficult thing to do, right? right. Knowing oh, yeah. the difference between right and wrong is not always easy. Right. So that's our calling, and it's it's interesting here. He goes on. There's a chapter break here. It's chapter six, and goes in verse one. Unfortunately, there's a chapter break there because the context is flowing right from this whole argument. Sure. It keeps going. It says, therefore, you can see the word therefore, that's that's a connecting idea, right? Mm-hmm. Let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So there's that word elementary again, which we said is the same word principles that he used up in chapter five in verse 12. But you can see here, he says, let us leave these things. He's talking about not, you know, leaving them behind and forgetting about them. He's talking in the sense of a child, of growing up in these things. Right. So they are foundational principles. So that's why he goes on to say, not laying again a foundation. I think that's very interesting. Right. So a foundation to a house is so very important to the whole structure. That's the first thing you build, and you make sure it's straight and level and is solid. Yeah. Right? And He's, you wreck that, everything else everything falls else, down. Yeah, it's crooked, it's out of balance, it falls down, mm-hmm. and uh, everything's off. So he doesn't want to lay that again because he's he's laid that foundation before. Here again, we have just kind of another analogy. It's topics that we're going to be talking about are foundational topics that we are building upon. And so the word foundation applies to six different topics that he mentions here. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to come here is because he actually lists for us foundational principles in this verse. So he says, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. So how many we got there, Matt? We got, well, we let's got see. Some... Uh, we've got what uh, repentance from dead works, that's one. Yep. Faith toward God. Yep. Instructions about washings. Yep. So we're at three. We've got the laying on of hands, that's four. The resurrection of dead is five, and then we have eternal judgment, that's six. Right. Did I count right there? Yeah. yeah. So we got a list of them here. Yep. I don't think this is a complete list. Uh, there's other things about the gospel that will come out in other passages. What he's doing here is he's giving us an example. And it's interesting when you really kind of look at them. I think they're in groups. Mm-hmm. And they're in couplets. So the first two are alike. The second two are alike. And the, the last two are alike. So let's, the, the first are repentance from dead works and a faith toward God. Right. So you see they're all about internal things. Yeah. It's about, about our thinking and Oh, attitude, I see. Okay. Right? So right. so each of these couplets is going to have sort of a theme like that a one. A theme, right. Okay. So the next two are instructions about washings and the laying on of hands. Right. So these are external things. They're external like rites or things that you, you do. Sure. Yeah. And then finally is the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Right. So those are... What would you call those? Like future, future, f- yeah. future facts. They're yeah. you know things that God has promised yeah. that are going to happen, and they're going to happen. So they're basically our worldview about what's going to happen with the earth. So we've started internally, and we've we've gradually sort of expanded outward and outward until we're looking <laughs> into the future. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah I like okay. That. So yeah, it starts in our own hearts, our own lives, and uh, expands out to understanding the overall grand purpose of God. So right. You know, it's kind of like a child, you know, at first we kind of, oh like, yeah, our own experiences, you know, we're all self-centered. And yeah. Then Way to tie it back in. Go with, the, understand the rules and commandments. And then we see that the world's a lot bigger than just our backyard. Sure. Right. Yeah. Nice. So all of these, and it's interesting when you, if you look at those subjects and you go through different passages, you'll find that uh, they come out in different places. An example of this is in Acts chapter two. We won't have time to go through it, but let me just give you an example here. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, you have the idea of repentance. In Acts chapter 2, and verse 41 and 44, you have the idea of faith right. or belief. 
And in Acts 2, verse 41, you have the idea of baptism, which is associated with the washings or sure. the water. Right. You also have the laying on of hands in verse 38, which he mentions here. And you have the resurrection in verse 32. And you have the judgment in verse 40. So if you go back and you read that chapter, you'll pick up all these same themes. Wow, it's all there. So what? why in Acts chapter 2 would we all have these all, all these same themes? Sure. Well, I mean, that's where Peter and the apostles are revealing the gospel message in its entirety to, for, the, to the world for the first time. For the first time. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense that they would all, all those themes and all those first principles would be there. And I think right. that's another way we can go through uh, and determine what are first principles is by looking at the speeches in the Acts. Sure. Because it's obvious that they're a condensed version of what they were talking about. Okay, and yeah. Luke would have picked the most important parts of their speeches right. and condensed them down to the uh, essential principles. Right, well, principles. and most of these speeches, too, the various apostles are telling people that have never heard about the gospel or don't know much about it, they're telling them about the gospel for the first time. So to them, this was these are the important things that we want to get across in right. your introduction to the gospel. Right. So when the people there said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Right. Peter said, repent. Right. That was the very first one. The very so first you, one. So that must be very important. Well, um, it must be because it's, it's often at the beginning of lists of things that a believer in Jesus needs to do. Yeah. I, probably every time, I would say. And Jesus also, so many times, he's, he's directing people to repent when he's, when he's teaching people and preaching to the, to the multitudes, and he tells them to repent. It's the first thing he tells them to do. And that's because repentance is naturally going to be the first step. Because when you start to understand for the first time what God wants from you, you realize yeah. Yeah. how... You haven't been doing that up to this point. You realize the things that you should have been doing that you weren't doing, yep. and you realize the things you should not have been doing that you have been doing. And so the very first reaction needs to be one of, of repentance. I, I, I recognize that I've been sinning, right. and I repent. How does the saying go? The first step to getting better is recognizing you have a problem, Yep. right? I mean, that's yeah. what repentance is. And that's the is, hardest right? part is to admit you're wrong. That's right. And, and so I think that's why it's at the beginning of that list. It's the yeah. first thing. It's repent and be baptized, right? And repentance comes first. Right. In Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized. That's right. right. So, so repentance is key. But one other thing to understand about it is, is that while, it's, while it should be our first reaction, it's also not something that we stop doing after that. Yes. Mm. Because once you start to understand what God wants from us and, and who we are as human beings, we understand that, that as human beings, we're constantly prone to doing things that we shouldn't do. As much as we try to do the right thing, we're going to fail over and over again. And so we need to constantly be acknowledging where we've done the wrong thing and, and repenting for it. So it's, a, it's the first thing we do, but it's also something we continue to do if oh, we're going to follow great Jesus. Great message, yeah. It's so important. And then f faith toward God. Right. It's another important part. Right. Second part. Faith then has to do with the next step after repentance, but coupled together with repentance. And that, you know, faith in God is belief that even though, even though God is a being that we cannot see, which is acknowledged uh, multiple times in the Bible, we believe that he's there, that he's watching over events, and he's made promises to us, which we'll become more familiar with in this podcast as, as we yeah. continue on. So it's a belief that, that he's going to be faithful to those promises and that the things he said are going to happen will happen. And so we've got repentance and then faith both linked together, like you said, because they come from the heart. Right, yeah. right. Excellent. Thanks, Matt. I, I think it's interesting how you, you connected faith with not only the belief in God, but what he has promised. And there's a verse in Hebrews 11, verse 6, which I think is an important distinction about faith. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible. Mm -hmm. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Right. So there's two things there in our faith, that yeah. he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. 
So that reward is something we're, we're going to be talking about this in later podcasts. Yeah, but absolutely. What has he promised? You know, right. That's so essential for us to understand. Right. So stay tuned. Stay tuned, yeah. Now, the next couplet is instruction about washings and the laying on of hands. And this is an interesting one because the word washings there is actually, if you look at it in the Greek, it's the word baptize. Right. And so the King James actually has there in teachings about baptisms. But in the context, you see, he's talking about the law. And back in the law, they had very cer- various ceremonies with washings. The priests would wash. There was a laver there to wash before right. they went into the service of God. So water and washing was a very important part of the the, the law right. in the Old Testament. Yes. But what he's been doing through Hebrews is showing how the law was a figure of things to come, that they were just basically lessons, these rites that they went through, that was supposed to point them towards Christ. I find that interesting here that he has instruction about washings, but he's using the word baptisms right here yeah and so he's saying oh, this is a foundational principle baptisms you see it's in the plural yeah. it's interesting right yeah because we have different types of baptisms in the new testament sure say the baptism of john right you had the baptism by water you had the baptism by the holy spirit and those kind of things and i think he wants us to understand that these are foundational principles our understanding about baptisms he also has the laying on of hands, which is another Old Testament aspect of the law that the person would lay their hands on an animal and sacrifice it. They became associated with oh, it. Oh, okay. Yep. It also became a practice in, in the New Testament. The laying on of hands was a way of passing on the Holy Spirit. That's right. So yep. there's an Old Testament component again and a New Testament component yes. in this kind of thing. So foundational principles about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gifts are, again, something that we're going to need to expand upon in future podcasts and talk about it because it's a foundational principle sure. of how we, we understand it. So now we've gotten into the final couplet. Uh, it's resurrection right. of the dead and eternal judgment. Right. So these are now future things, right? We've gone from internal to external to looking towards the future. And so we have resurrection of the dead. And, and the resurrection of the dead is really at the heart of, of the Christian faith and of the gospel message and of what the Bible teaches. Oh, yeah. It's no surprise that that's here. Yeah. The Apostle Paul does a really good job of laying out sort of the logical progression of thought in 1 Corinthians 15 that explains why the resurrection of the dead is so important. It would seem in 1 Corinthians, especially specifically in chapter 15, that there were some who were teaching and these probably would have been people in the church were teaching that there was not going to be a resurrection from the dead. And Paul is responding to them, and his argument is very straightforward. So he says, look, if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Jesus wasn't raised from the dead. And if Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, then there's no forgiveness of sins. And if there's no forgiveness of sins, then everything that we're doing, these good works that we're trying to do and the preaching and then the miracles, it's all for nothing Mm. because there's no forgiveness of sins because Jesus wasn't raised from the dead. And so it's at the heart of our faith and our understanding that there is a resurrection from the dead, that even if we die in this life, that God will raise us. And then that's coupled with the second point in this last couplet, which is at the end of verse two, which is eternal judgment. And so the Bible teaches that in the final analysis, we will be raised from the dead, those who have an understanding of what God requires from us, and then we'll be judged, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go on further beyond that, but there will be a kingdom on this earth. And I know that's a subject of future podcasts, what we've been told that kingdom will be like. So the resurrection of the dead is fundamental to the Christian faith, and everything else that's taught in the New Testament and the Old hangs in the balance based on whether or not we believe that we will be raised from the dead. Because if we won't be raised from the dead, then the rest of it is kind of pointless. But if we will, then we really want to seriously consider everything else that's said in the Bible and try to follow the commands of Jesus. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. In fact, I, was, I turned up 1 Corinthians 15, and one of the verses there, verse 14 says, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. Right. Like the idea of empty. Yes. So I think that's kind of interesting because it, it's talking about 
the last principle in our list here, the resurrection of the dead, if you don't understand that, it affects the very first kind of couplet, your faith right. towards God. Yeah. And not understanding the power of God and those kind of things. So we really yeah. have to understand the resurrection. Absolutely. There's actually a group in the New Testament called the Sadducees. That's right. And Jesus would argue with them repeatedly. But at one point, I think it's in Mark chapter 12, he would tell them that they did greatly err. I think that's probably from the King because James they, Version. Because they didn't believe in a resurrection. They didn't believe in so the resurrection. So kind of like the same thing in 1 Corinthians 15, that's right. that there is no resurrection of the dead. That was one of the things that defined that group, the Sadducees, the Sadducees. was that they didn't believe in a resurrection. Right. And so Jesus, Jesus said to them, this is a big problem if you don't believe in the resurrection. Right? He right. couldn't be much more clear than he was. You need to believe in the resurrection. Now, look up that verse. It actually says, you therefore do greatly err. Right. So that's Mark 12, like verses 24 through 27. Yes. And that's scary. And Jesus Christ saying, you do greatly err because you don't believe in the resurrection. Right. That shows how important this subject is. Yep. Yep. It's, it's crucial. You take it away and, and everything else falls down. I mean, I guess that's the definition of a foundation principle. Right? Yeah. You take away the foundation, it all collapses. It all collapses. Now, you, the 1 Corinthians 15 one is interesting because there's people teaching that there was no resurrection of the dead. So absolutely, if, you, if you're teaching that, you're teaching something directly that's not the, tr- not the truth of what God has taught in the scriptures. Now, there's another ex- interesting example. It's in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 18 because there was another group of people who were saying that the resurrection had passed already. Okay, yeah. So they, they weren't teaching that there was no resurrection. They were just saying, well, it's already happened. There is no future resurrection. So when you look at a first principle, you're saying, okay, first principle, the resurrection of the dead. What's first principle? Who, what, where, when, how? Well, in this, in this aspect, it's the when right. that affects it because they're sure. saying, well, it's happened, but it's, it's passed already. Right. And it's in Second Timothy chapter, chapter two. I want to pick it up in verse fifteen. In in the context here, he says, "Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth." And I want to pick up that phrase because he's exhorting Timothy and the believers that they need to rightly handle the word of truth, that there is a truth in the word of God. We can mishandle it. We can misinterpret it. Sure. But we have to be good enough Bible students to understand what the true message is. So he goes on to say there, but avoid irreverent babble. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) For it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened and they are upsetting the faith of some. So the, these two fellows, Hymenaeus and Philetus, were swerving from the truth, saying it's, it's already passed. And Paul really lays the gauntlet down. He says, it's like gangrene. That's how yeah. bad this is. It's like uh, f- flesh is, your flesh is rotting in the body of Christ if right. you're teaching this kind of stuff. That's, yeah, there's a problem at the fundamental level. Right. Yeah. And they are upsetting the faith of some. So there we see the, again the connection with our faith. Right. The very essential the faith. And so it's it's interesting in verse 19 he says, "But God's firm foundation stands." So he gets back to this this word foundation that we saw back in Hebrews chapter 6 in yep. verse 1. Yep. That this is a foundational teaching. And God knows who are his. And he says, let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So it's these kind of false teachings that we have to depart from and and those who teach it because he says it's going to lead unto ungodliness in the way that it manifests itself in our actions. Right. And not being able to discern between good and evil. Right. Very interesting. So there we go. There's the six. Right. right? We break them down very simply. Yeah. Going to have to elaborate on all of those more in future podcasts. But we've seen this idea of a a basic principle come from Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. So when we use the phrase first principle or basic principle or essential teaching, that's where that comes from. And he lays lays it all out here for us in 
some examples given to us that we can use of six different ones. And I wanted to end the podcast on one verse. If we take all of this, I want to go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Oh, and it's a good chapter. See, yeah, it's, this is the thing about you know, Bible study is you can, you can actually, if you get into it, you can see these things in different places. And Ecclesiastes 12, I believe, is one of them. Not word for word, but I think you get the same ideas here okay. that we saw in our 6. So here it is, Ecclesiastes 12 at verse 13. The end of the matter. All has been heard. So he's, he's concluding everything about Ecclesiastes, Solomon is, and the great experiment. And he boils it down to this. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. Right. So how many are there? There's three things, right? Right? There's fear God. Mm-hmm. Keep his commandments. And what's the third one? There's going to be a judgment. Ah, I see. God will bring every deed into judgment. Right. Right. So that's the one that kind of keyed me on this thought here. Well, we have judgment in Hebrews. Right. Do we have the other two? Fear God? What would that associate with? Well, the first two then. Yeah. The, the repentance internal and the aspect. faith, that internal. Yeah. 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 What drives us? Right. And then, of course, I see where you're going. So keeping his commandments, keep that's command. the external. That's the external yeah. about baptism and the laying on of hands. Right. And then he ends with the overall judgment to come of God. Right. Who will, will bring every secret thing out, whether good or evil. Very good. Right? It's all there. <laughs> the same principles said right. in different language. Right. Very good. Well, this has been a very exciting first episode. I'm looking forward to the rest of them. Yeah, I think we kind of laid the groundwork of what uh, future episodes are going to be like. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll be doing the same. We'll be digging into the scripture and learning more about God, learning more about ourselves, and working on our relationship with God. Perfect. I look forward to it. Well, that's the end of our first podcast, as you can tell by the music that's playing. If you've made it this far, boy, I have to applaud you for your listening endurance. This is our very first podcast, and I'm very excited to get this thing launched. It only gets better from here. We have a full season of some very fun and interesting studies that I don't think you're going to want to miss. I'm really excited about what's coming next. So we thank you for listening. We'd love to hear from you. You can go to our website at www.essentialbiblestudies.org. And fill out that contact form. My hope is that you'll contact us with questions and comments that we can use on the show. And we're definitely open to suggestions for future show topics. If you're on Facebook, then do a search on Essential Bible Studies Podcast. It'll pop right up. And you can like our page. If you're into Instagram or Twitter, you can also stay up to date with us on those social sites. And we need your help. If you really like this podcast, please share it, like it, give it all the stars you can. That would be huge. So much help. This is a Christadelphian podcast supported by the Book Road Ecclesia in beautiful Ancaster, Ontario, Canada. Until we meet again, dear friends, I pray to God that you may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Amen.